The learning outcomes of this module will be what is forensic entomology and their divisions, what are various roles of forensic entomologists, the factors which affect the growth rate of insects, how the postpartum interval can be determined with forensic entomology, the equipment and tools for the evidence collection at crime scene, we talk about the forensic entomology. So forensic entomology is the use of insects and other arthropods that feed on decaying remains to add in the legal investigation. The divisions of forensic entomology may be the urban, the stored as well as stored product as well as the medical legal. The urban it concerns with the litigation arising from the bed bugs and termites affecting man-made structures and other aspects of human environment. The stored product like it covers the litigation arising from the grains and other food contamination by insects. Medico legal where we are concerned more in this uh, particular aspect here. It involves the analysis of necrophagous insects to gain insight into the time of death or for calculating time since death. So the role of forensic entomologist is basically the identification of insects at various stages of their life cycle, the collection and preservation of insects as evidence, the determining and estimate for the postmortem interval or the PMI in short form that is the time between death and the discovery of the body using factors such as insect evidence, weather conditions etc. testifying in the court to explain insect related evidence found at a crime scene. If you see the historical perspective of the forensic entomology, the earliest known reference dates back to 13th century in a Chinese manuscript, The Washing Away of Wrongs written by Sung Zhu. The first application of forensic entomology in determination of PMI in a child death was used in France by Dr. Burgret, Burgret D. Arbois in 1850. Then Jean Pierre Magnin, a French veterinarian did revolutionary work to give the theory of predictable waves or succession of insects onto the corpus. The Bernard Greenberg is regarded as the father of modern forensic entomology. Then forensically relevant insects are, insects are of course the ubiquitous in nature. E even if we don't see them, they are likely to be involved in the crime scene. But the entomologist can help forensic pathologist or a doctor conducting the postmortem examination in determining time of death by looking at the insects that are feeding on and around the body. There are flies, beetles, ants. The flies are the first one to get attracted towards the dead bodies. It is the carrion group of flies which includes the Califoridae group that is blow flies, the Sarcophagidae that is flesh flight and the Muscidae that is the house flies and they all belong to the order Diptera. So these are the three group of flies which are important. They are most widespread and accurate insects for determining time of death. Then the beetles. These are often found on old cadavers or in dry conditions. The beetles include the carrion beetles that is Sylphidae, the row beetles that is Staphylidae, and the carpet beetles that is Dermestids group and belong to the order Coleoptera. Then there are ants. These generally consume smaller cadavers and belong to the order Hymenoptera. And all these insects belong to the class Insecta of the phylum Arthropoda. Then let's see the current perspective of the forensic entomology. As I said about calculation of time of death, that is with the help of larval development. The first approach in the estimation of time since death is the estimation of maggots developing in the body. For this purpose, the knowledge of life histories of flies of families Califoridae that is blowfly, the Sarcophagidae that is flesh fly and Muscidae that is house fly has an important application in the forensic medicine. The fly life cycle can take anywhere from few days to several months depending upon several factors. For many fly species, the precise timing of their life cycle has been calculated and this can be used to calibrate time of death or the lifetime of infestation. Let's understand blowfly metamorphosis. 
the blow flies are the gold standard forensic indicators these are most useful in estimating time of death these are the ones that come in first immediately after the body is dead and start to decompose so they have an incredible sense of smell they have a complete life cycle which consists of egg larva pupa and adult stages known as complete metamorphosis we see the blow fly life cycle the first the adult flies lay eggs on the carcass especially at the wound areas or around the openings in the body such as nose eyes ears anus then the second the eggs hatch into the larva that is the maggots and this happens around 12 to 24 hours then thirdly the larvae continues to grow by feeding on the cobs and molds that is shed their exoskeleton as they pass through the various instar stages what we called as there are uh, three instar stages first second and third the first instar stage is 5 mm long and that happens around 1.8 days the second is instar stage is 10 mm long and that occurs after around 2.5 days the third instar stage is 14 to 16 mm long and that happens up after 4 to 5 days then the fourth stage in the developmental stage in the metamorphosis stage the larvae that is around 17 mm of size once it gets satiated they develop into pupa after burrowing in the surrounding soil and then fifth stage is the adult flies emerge from pupa cases after around 6 to 8 days insects have hard exoskeletons so when they grow they have to shed their skin the larvae are all about growing and getting bigger so they grow as fast as they can and molt when they need to when their skin gets too tight once a larva reach full size it goes through metamorphosis a complicated rearrangement of body parts and tissues that lead to the development of adult characteristics therefore insects have so many stages in their life cycle then the factors that affect growth rate of the insect are temperature higher the temperature faster the insect will grow and develop into an adult then the food quality eating rich nutritious food help larvae grow faster then the oxygen levels increasing oxygen concentration increases growth rate of insects then the day length or the season of the month many insects coordinate their development cycles with the seasons then time since death that is the faunal succession the faunal succession is the term used to describe the transition of colonizing species from one insect species to another through the different stages of decay succession is a less precise science than the postmortem interval relying to some extent on the forensic entomologist prior knowledge of the species or a wide range of families and is also reliant on the knowledge of local fauna assess the significance of the presence or absence of a particular species the faunal succession can vary significantly between individual cadavers and the arrival time of certain species are influenced by the local factors since insects invade bodies in waves the estimation of time since death requires the ability to identify each species in all stages of their life cycles and knowledge of the time occupied by each life stage under various condition a typical succession of insect colonization let's see how it happens the flies arrive within minutes or hours of death as the body begins to give off the odors of decomposition the carrion beetles arrive within few days and dig underneath the body and begin feeding the copper beetles arrive once the corpse is dried out sufficiently and begin to consume skin and hairs then what are the factors which affect the insect colonization the weather when it's raining insects are less active so colonization is slowed the temperature as i told during cold when temperature is less insects are less active and grow slowly the burial or the exposure even a partially buried corpse decomposes slowly the degree of exposure also affects how accessible the body is for colonization so naturally the more exposure the more attraction of the flies location the body is in dry environment 
will desiccate before insect colonization. Bodies in wet places will attract a different set of insects like aquatic beetles. Then the temperature dependent development. Insects are the cold blooded organisms as we know. The rate of development is more or less dependent on ambient temperature. For each species there is a threshold temperature below which no development occurs. As temperature rises above this threshold, a certain amount of time is required for the insect to pass through each life stage. Because this heat is accumulated as thermal units, it can be calibrated and described as degree days or degree hours. Now let's see what are the problems which occur with the faunal succession. The differences in weather, location, season and the extent of interference by the other animals makes it very difficult to predict by a forensic entomologist what a species will arrive when. However, the most important parameter or you can say the information with the help of forensic entomology, with the help of insects in knowing about the postmortem interval. Let's see how does it help. Postmortem interval is the time elapsed since death and this estimation of accurate PMI can help to identify both the criminal and victim by eliminating the suspects. The estimated stage of an immature insect that has fed on a body provide a minimum PMI because offsprings are not deposited on a live host. Basic assumptions that a forensic entomologist make before calculating time of death or time since death are number one, most homicides occur at night under cover of the darkness when flies are presumably inactive. The flies will begin ovipositing as soon as they discover the body. The faunal succession in and under the corpse will follow a predictable pattern. The weather conditions recorded at a site distance from the death scene reflect the conditions at the scene. Then the ambient air temperatures are the major factors influencing the rate of maggot development. Then how to calculate the estimate the postmortem interval. Collect and preserve a sample prior to use in estimating PMI. Rear others to adult stage for identification. The moment of preservation is the point in time from which you calculate backwards to the death and use known developmental times of constant temperatures to estimate PMI. Then place of death. Since some of the species appear in a particular geographical area or a particular locality, from the examination of the insects, the particular geographic and ecologic place can be known. Determine neglect of the patient or children, cases where wounds and bed sores arising out of physical abuse or neglect become infestated with insects, forensic entomology may be useful. Then the manner of death. Actual event that led to that is especially important in advanced putrefied bodies. The putrefied body has wounds infested with insects. It could be homicide or trauma. In case of death due to suspected poisoning by using arthropods in a corpse at a crime scene, investigators can determine whether toxins were present in a body at the time of death. Then comes entomotoxicology. That's a whole new branch of the forensic entomology which has come up. The recovery of heavy metals from the bodies in the 1970s and 80s led to the development of forensic research at the boundary between entomology and the chemistry and this become now known as entomotoxicology. Basically, it is the analysis of toxins in arthropods that is mainly flies and beetles that feed on carrion that is human corpse. This technique is a major advancement in forensics. Previously, such determinants were impossible in the case of severely decomposed bodies divided off intoxicated tissue and body fluids. Now we can divide this entomotoxicology into two main categories. Entomological analysis of substance induced changes to insect development rates with subsequent effects on the PMI estimation. Then the toxicological analysis of drugs within insects. The substances may be more easily detected because of the storage excretion and bioaccumulation in insect metabolism resulting in concentration of substances higher than in the surrounding tissues. The substance induced changes can be caused by substances external to the body. For example, fire accelerants, oil, paint, organophosphate poisons or those internal such as ingested or injected narcotics 
alcohol consumption or pharmaceuticals and most important in this context is the presence of pharmaceutical or narcotic drugs in the diseased and the differential effect these can have on insect growth depending on where in the body these drugs and their metabolites concentrate and whether some or all of the maggots have fed on those tissues. We know for example that over the counter medicines such as paracetamol is one of the foremost drugs used in the suicide typically resulting in a level of around 250 milligram per kg drug to the body weight concentration. At this concentration growth period of blow fly larvae is differentially increased by up to 4 days. So this critical piece of evidence suggests that the growth pattern diverges from the normal linear relationship we more commonly use. Again a commonly prescribed drug for anxiety and sleep disorder not as a palm and oxygen palm and its metabolite in the human body they cause an increase of at least 24 hours especially on around day 4 of the drug accumulation. Amitriptyline, a tricyclic antidepressant, this prolongs the post feeding and pupa stages resulting in death during either of these thus preventing complete development of the adulthood. Another prescription drug Zopiclone for the short term treatment of insomnia which is used. This prevents pupariation, the process by which the blow fly maggots turn into pupa. So this stage is prevented. Acting on the peripheral nervous system, it has the effect of seriously disrupting this pupation process. Among the narcotics, cocaine seems to have little effect but ecstasy, this is speeds up development and reduces both the larval and pupil growth periods, sometimes resulting in the death of the insect as well. While this methamphetamine on its own appears to have little effect other than possibly terminating the insect growth at the pupal stage. On the other hand, Human lethal dose of morphine results in a 24 hour increase in development while heroin at human lethal doses increases the larval growth period and can dramatically alter the pupa duration by 18 to 36 hours. The organophosphate poisons such as melathion do not necessarily result in death of the flies breeding in the bodies containing human lethal dose. Instead, melathion extends the larval growth period by about 72 hours. Clearly, such alterations of the growth in different stages of insect life cycle impact on the assessment of the PMI. It therefore becomes critical that the entomologist is informed of the drug or alcohol uses in cases requiring PMI assessment, in cases where the body is extensively decomposed and tissues are no longer available to analyze. It may be possible to process the gut contents from the particular developmental stages of insects collected from the death scene that have fed on the body and this may be the only recoverable evidence of the drug presence in the decedent. Then the entomological DNA assessment. The species determination and assessment of human DNA from the crops of hematogenous or the blood feeding species are two aspects of DNA studies particularly important in the forensic context. The insect crop is the portion of the digestive tract forming the bulk of the foregut and capable of considerable expansion. It is distal to the esophagus serving as a storage vessel retaining undigested food prior to its movement through the valve into the midgut for digestion. The purified and PCR amplified human DNA can be extracted from the guts of species feeding on human remains. In addition, within a given post feeding period, human DNA remains viable and can be isolated from the blood meals of hematophagous insects including lice, bed bugs, assassin bugs, mosquitoes, fleas, non-insect arthropods such as ticks and mites and other invertebrates such as leeches. A species with limited dispersal such as bed bugs and longer post feeding storage of crop contents offer the most promising results. Now let us see what are the equipment and tools required for evidence collection at the crime scene or at the recovery of the body. Fine paint brush for collecting eggs, spoons for collecting maggots, the fine and medium forceps for collecting adults and more fragile immature insects, the hand net for catching uh, flying insects, 70% ethanol for storing dead specimens, 
the protocol sheets for writing down what specimens were collected, the labels, the vials and the storage boxes are different sizes for preserving living and dead insects, the stardust or tissue paper for handling eggs and living larvae in vials or storage boxes, shovel and robust plastic bags for soil samples and leaf litter, thermometer for measuring the body and ambient temperatures as well as the larval mass temperature and they of course the camera for the photographic evidence. The common sites for sampling are the natural orifices and the eyes, traumatic wounds, at the corpse, substrate interface and under the body, in the folds of cloths and pockets, shoes, socks, from the carpet, bag or material in which the body might have been wrapped, from the plastic body bag in which the corpse or the remains have been enclosed for transport to the place of autopsy and storage. Then there are for evidence collection, practical guidelines and uh, they can be clubbed in three groups namely maggots, insects from soil and other insects. The maggots are immersed and killed in very hot almost boiling water and transferred to a solution of acetic alcohol that is 3 parts 70 percent alcohol and 1 part glacial acetic acid. Killing in hot water over immediate immersion in preservative has two advantages. Death of maggot is in instantaneous so exact moment of death can be known. Then the hot water kills maggot in a relaxed stage in which they are fully stretched. The measurement of maggots can then be compared with measurements from the experimental work. If maggots are immersed in preservative to cool them, they will shrink and any measurements will be difficult to interpret. Then the rearing of maggots can be done. They can be kept alive on same meat or liver and reared to the adult stage. Any puparia either empty or with pupa inside them should be preserved in a specimen tube. Then all the containers carrying live specimen must be perforated for gaseous exchange so that the live organisms get the proper oxygen. Then collect a specimen from everywhere on the cops. Try to collect a specimen of every type, shape and size. Sample size will vary depending upon the number of larvae found. From all the larvae where fewer than 100 are available to 1 to 10 10 percent of the larvae where thousands are available. Then the soil insects, the soil sample should be collected in specimen bags from which insects can later be extracted in the laboratory. The each soil sample should be as much as would foot into a pint bottle soil and the soil should not be compacted. The storage in ethanol ensures that a later DNA analysis for identification is still possible. This may be necessary if a pharmacological uh, identification is not possible. To summarize the topic, the use of insects in criminal in investigation is well established. Usually the knowledge and experience of a professional entomologist is required to establish species identity and to understand and explain the biology associated with these species. Consequently, the potential use of insect in the forensic context is extensive. The most frequent application of insect to criminal investigation is the estimation of PMI, that is the minimum period since the first eggs were laid. Considerations affecting this estimation include the ambient temperature, weather, time of day, presence of drugs, amount of clothing or attempts to conceal or destroy evidence indoors or outdoors to prevent investigation. The other important applications of forensic entomology include the assessment of drug use and the extraction of human DNA from the crops of hematophagous species. Significant developments are expected in both these areas of research. In the wider forensic context, insects are used in many aspects of forensic investigation, sometimes of less medical significance such as veterinary cases, misapplication of pesticides, conservation, important violation, food contamination as well as insurance dispute. So forensic entomology is an emerging field in the forensic sciences. It has become an important tool in criminal investigations. Increased instances of forensic entomologists being involved in criminal investigations as part of the forensic team have necessitated the need for an increase in awareness of the emerging sciences like forensic entomology and its application. 
And to finish with this topic of forensic entomology, there is a quote, the insects will tell you everything, pupil lie, but insects don't lie.